It was on 6th August, almost 76 years ago. A little boy got dropped by a plane, Enola Gay, at Hiroshima. And on 9th August, a fat man at Nagasaki. And this combination of little boy and fat man killed almost three and a half lakh people and created total devastation. Nothing would grow in Hiroshima for 75 years. Then a magic happened when red canna flowers started blooming in the rubble and the long journey towards recovery has started in Japan and within no time Japan has rebuilt as one of the most developed nations in the world. What made this? What made this change? Japanese made resilience as their companion and as their art of living. Resilience and tenacity, if you see, are central to even India's ethos also. In the glorious Indian history, if you see, we have faced moments that may have slowed us down, but it never crushed our spirit. We have bounced back again and gone on to spectacular uh, things. We started doing spectacular things. That is why our civilization stands tall always. This needs to be kept in mind. Where there is a resolve and where there is a resilience, resources come naturally. This also is one of the points we should always understand. Resilience during adversity is regarded as one of the traits of the great people who have dedicated themselves to the self-improvement also. I give you an example of one gentleman by name Srikanth Bola. He is a visually impaired boy, son of a farmer. He got admission into the science stream after fighting in the court. Then he wanted to study in IIT, but he could not get the hall ticket. So finally he took a decision and he thought that I can't fight the system, let me think beyond, let me think beyond. He applied to MIT, US and he was given admission in five year management course with full scholarship. Despite several offers, he returned back to India and he took two sick paper mills and turned them around. Now he is the CEO of Bolant Industries, which sold 82 crores of worth of material. Why this has happened? Because of the resilience of Srikanth Bala. A form of resilience always exists as an instinct in human beings. This one should apply. What is the type of instinct? It is either the, in the form of freeze or in the form of flight or in the form of fight. So, freeze, flight and fight are the three distinct instincts in human beings whenever you are facing an adversity. But resilience in full capacity is not just defense, but adaptability and growth. It is adaptability and growth. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi on a winter night was thrown out of the first class compartment from the train at Mattisburg railway station. The thoughts in his mind during that time was, do I fight for my rights? Do I go back to India? Or do I go back to Pretoria and practice, complete my cases and go back to India? But he fought for the rights, not only in South Africa, but also in India and transformed himself into Mahatma Gandhi because resilience was his companion. Resilience was the companion of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi who transformed himself into Mahatma Gandhi. Resilience is the common characteristic feature of world's great leaders. This we should remember. So if you want to convert yourself, if you want to transform yourself, make resilience as your companion. Once somebody makes resilience as his companion, the chances of him growing into a big person is bound to be there. Nature always instigates, nature always instigates every essential feature of life on earth, either through natural calamities or through pandemic times. Of course, humans who try to improve themselves 
superior to nature create their own adversities. This also we should remember. The current pandemic is one of the examples standing in front of all of us. Every adversity has been a path to extraordinary growth in human intellect. This also one should remember. Wars and virus have caused major adversities in the world. They create confusion and loss of hope about the future for the generation. But surprisingly, wars and viruses have given an opportunity in adversity to progress much faster. After the second world war, if you see, the world has progressed like anything in all the fronts. Maybe take the industrial area or maybe uh, the agricultural sector, the economic growth and it has taken place leaps and bounds. What we could have achieved in 100 years after the world war we could achieve it in 15 years. So, because many nations and people have adopted resilience as their companions. So, always let us adopt resilience as our companion to growth at a much faster rate. Human beings are 1 in 84 million creatures on the earth. Imagine how each creature on earth must be finding ways to get through the adversities of all kinds on them. Brilliance of knowledge and creativity are the outcomes of being resilient. If one is resilient, then brilliance of knowledge and creativity are the outcomes. So, if you want to have creativity and brilliance of knowledge, then resilience is the only solution. Spirituality and curiosity are also the key essential for resilience because Spirituality is the tiny light in, in which twinkles somewhere in us and where everything around turns into darkness in times of adversity. Spirituality and curiosity are key essential to the resilience because spirituality is the tiny little light which twinkles somewhere inside us when everything around turns into darkness in the times of adversity. Ants are the tiniest creatures around, but in resilience, they are unbeatable. So are many creatures on the earth, like the camels, penguins and all. But the most resilient of all the creatures on earth are the tardigrades. They are also called as water bears. Tiniest in form, but most resilient. They can survive in any adverse climate. Hence, they are researched the most because they can survive in space also. The advanced research is on their DNA so that it can be used to create possibilities of human survival in space. Resilience is in highest demand now that we need to understand. Resilience must be taught from early years of life. That is why most of the stories mention how protagonists, how protagonists always strive back from adversity. So, that is why there is a saying, storms make the trees take deeper roots. Storms make the trees take deeper roots. I stayed in Mumbai as part of my service. I found great resilience in Mumbai curse. The life in Mumbai bounces back immediately. The Mumbai life bounced back after the 1993 bomb blast. After the 26-11 attacks, and after regular torrential rains which they receive every year. So, I started observing, I started observing what qualities of Mumbaikers make them very resilient. Then I found there are eight qualities if we can inculcate in human beings that race becomes very, very resilient. The first one is the competence. We need to have the competence to face the situation or we must develop that competence. Then we should have the confidence that we can reverse the situation or one needs to inculcate the confidence in them to handle the situation. And we need to have contacts among people. We should know the strength of each community or we should know the strength of each individual when we, have, we can develop such type of contacts, then handling the situation becomes much easier. Then we need to develop proper character. 
whenever there is an adversity, two types of characters emerge. One is the exploitative character, the other one is the helping characters. What we need during the adversity is to develop this helping type of people so that handling the crisis becomes easy. And the next one is the contribution. Everyone should contribute to the best of his ability. When everybody starts contributing to the best of the ability, then what happens? Handling adversity becomes much easier and bouncing back will be very, very easier. Then next thing is we need to cope up with the situation. At individual level, you should cope up. At industry level, you should cope up. At academic level, at family level, at business level, at agriculture level, at sanitation level, at health level, media level to overcome the situation. So this is called the coping up of the situation is very easy. All people in the society, they should be able to cope up with the situation as per their strength. And then at every level, we must take so many things under our control to face the situation. And the last thing is the coordination. So you, when you start working in a coordinated manner, then bouncing back becomes very, very easy. So in the days to come, we are going to have so many adversities going to come. We don't know when the pandemic is going to end. And there are, they are saying there is going to be a third wave and it is going to, the virus is going to mutate. So these things are going to be there, but we have to prepare ourselves by developing these eight qualities in the people so that whatever may be the pandemic, handling becomes easy. So the eight qualities, what I always tell people, they are the competence. It is the confidence. It is the contacts, the character, the contribution, coping up, control, and coordination. They are the essential things. They look alike. They look similar to what Buddha has said in the eightfold path. So he suggested eightfold path to come out of the misery. These eight qualities, if we can develop, we can come out of these adversities and we can be more resilient. So this is the requirement of today. All the people who are involved in the development of the society have to see that these eight qualities become part and parcel of lives of people so that any adversity, we need not have to worry, we can bounce back immediately. Then similarly, in order to inculcate these qualities, we have to adopt certain things. So the eight qualities, what I mentioned, in order to have these qualities, we need to have to adopt certain things. Move with positive people. Move with positivity. Avoid negative and the viral news, what it is coming on, maybe on your social media or any this thing. Then develop positive relations and circulate good literature among people. So always it is positivity that is going to help the society. When positivity is around, everybody starts thinking positive, then the inner potential, what is there in each and every human being, it comes out and in the process, the, we can bounce back from the adverse situation. So then medical people in the present pandemic, which brought in lot of despair and anxiety in the minds of the people, even medical people also, what they started telling? It is not the medicines, but it is the confidence which is going to make you survive this situation. So it is not medicines, it is the confidence. So confidence building measures have to be there. So if you are, want to be resilient, you need to be confident. You need to develop that confidence in you so that, so the government, the intellectuals, the media, they play a very important role for us to bounce back from this pandemic or maybe from any adversity. Many sectors must be managed effectively like the hospitality industries, like the manufacturing industry, like agriculture, like education, then tourism and growing unemployment. All these sectors now need to be managed by us because we are undergoing this pandemic. The mindset should be changed for this purpose and the mindset should be changed to face the situation better dynamism must be brought to bounce back from this situation. Institutions like the IITs, the IISCs or the research institutions and the labs, they must improve their research and offer solution to the current situation. So I always say, let us develop these qualities. Let us replace jealous with competence. Let us replace hatredness with love. 
let us replace exploitation with harmony. Instead of politicization, let us humanize the society. Let us humanize the society. Instead of vote bank, it should be a human bank. So, if you start replacing these things with the positive mindset, then what is going to result? Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma Amrutangamaya. Let us be resilient and let us make resilience as our companions and let us bounce back from any adverse situation. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.